Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. I'm Mora, if you didn't know already. Um, I did a couple videos on like makeup and skin stuff and I really enjoy those, but before that I basically did like all crime stuff because that's kind of where my heart lies. Well, okay, my heart lies between the two, in both, on all of them. I'm going back to crime for a little bit. Um, I might be doing something completely different next week, who knows? We're going back to crime. So I hope you enjoy. Today I'm going to tell you a kind of older story, the story of Pauline Picard. So Pauline lived in France in 1922. She's from a place called Goaz à la Deux. I'll put it on the screen here. I don't know how to say it exactly, it's French. And at this time, Pauline was two years old. She and her family lived on a farm and it was a pretty big, like, space you know this is a smaller town it's a country town it's a kind of thing that you just would play out in you know the fields with your siblings and um i couldn't find an exact number of siblings but it seemed like she had multiple kids in her family and uh the story starts with pauline playing outside i have to like make a note of this because i'm not really sure how people are now um when i was younger i got to like play outside a lot by myself but it's changed a little bit now. Back then, especially if you were in like the country, there was no reason not to just go play outside by yourself. Like you could literally just go out into like the wheat fields or fields, corn, whatever, and be out there all day. It wouldn't matter because um, your house is right there. You're on your own land. So there's really no reason to not, you know? It's not weird for her to be playing outside alone. But that night, Pauline is missing. Her parents, are calling her to come in. I imagine that like her siblings probably went out and tried to find her, you know, she's two. Maybe she just like got lost in the maze of like fields or something. Maybe she's distracted, maybe she can't hear them. So they go out, they try to find her, but they cannot find her anywhere. And unlike a lot of stories that we hear from the 1900s, basically, um, everyone actually started looking immediately. Like they even called in volunteers, they had their neighbors looking. Everyone was looking really diligently um, for Pauline because, I mean, I can imagine, you know, it's a two-year-old, so like how far can they go? But also like they can go really far. If you've ever met a two-year-old, they have like boundless energy, but also like they can fall asleep any second. So I can understand them kind of having to really get on it, you know? And now we know that it's really important those first even like six hours, first hour really of a child going missing is the most important. But even after all of their searching, they couldn't find Pauline. There was no news for weeks. They actually even put out a picture of her um, in newspapers and things like across France because who knew you know they didn't know what it could have been it's not like kidnappings and things like that were that well known at this point sure they probably have you know heard horror stories every once in a while but like that's such a far and away thing it would be more likely for a kid to have you know wandered off and someone found them you know and when a call from Cherbourg 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 <laughs> When a call from Cherbourg comes in, I'm sorry if I pronounced that very wrong, which is about 400 kilometers away, things started to look up. They explained that someone had seen the picture of Pauline in the newspaper and they had a girl who looked just like her. And you know, they're like, I don't know, but this could be Pauline, she's two, she looks the exact same. So like, like she isn't really talking much, but this could be her. They actually took a picture of the little girl, they sent it to the Picards, and the Picards obviously were like, oh my god, it's our, it's our, it's our girl. It had been weeks, and somehow she'd gotten 400 kilometers away, but she was safe. And so they went, they got her, they brought her back. It was, it was a little weird. They said that like she didn't really recognize the parents, it seems like, but they were kind of like, you know, it's been a couple of weeks, and she's only two and maybe she's really scared still like who knows what happened so they kind of were like you know we'll give it some time which i i get that makes sense and so they brought her home and her siblings like 
recognized her immediately and were like so happy and they're all obviously like super confused because it's like where did you go and she's only two so you don't really have the language to explain like took a bus you know or something there's no one there's no way to explain um so i'm guessing the entire family was like like okay glad you're home things were still weird um first of all she was found 400 kilometers away that's about 200 miles uh, that's a really really far <laughs> two pauline or pauline didn't remember any of them really it didn't she didn't seem like she recognized them at all and as young as she is babies still like recognize their family <laughs> uh, if you've ever been around like a toddler um or someone who's one or two even they like know who you are like they can look at you and know even over like the phone so I don't see how that is quite possible for her to just like not know at all. You know, at first maybe, but over time, it seems weird. The other thing that was very strange is that she also didn't have the same dialect of French as they had. In France, there are very different dialects of French. Um, and because Guaise is, I believe, a little bit more south, and Cherbourg is a little bit up over here. I might be completely wrong, I might have switched those. I'll put a map up so you can kind of see, but uh, they're very different dialects to the point where there's some where you literally cannot understand the other person even if you are fluent in French. While all of these things do kind of point to her not being Pauline, um, there's a thing of one, she looks exactly like her, um, and two, Pauline was only two. She had been gone for a month and you can understand how anyone would want to just believe that this is a little girl no matter what things contradict it you're gonna just hope that that's your little girl but around may 27th so the story had started in april and it's may now uh so i don't know dates <laughs> it's been over a month um i believe it's like a month like two almost two months now something was found um, about a mile from the Picard farm, a little body was found and it was mostly decomposed. It was missing hands, feet, and a head. The clothing, which was found folded beside the body, matched the clothing that Pauline had worn when she had gone missing that day. There's a lot of things about this that are terrible, um, and really strange. They're pretty sure this is Pauline. Um, they they know it's Pauline at this point, but this spot it was only a mile from the Picard home and It was actually like fairly close to an area that was pretty well walked It had been found by a cyclist who had been driving past um, And it was like a route he took every single day. He was like the, I I'm here literally every day It wasn't here yesterday. It's here now. I don't know what's happening and another weird thing that might be completely you know a different story but an adult skull was also found nearby there's also this really weird bit about a farmer who had come to talk to the picards around the time that they had brought home that little girl who we now know is not pauline um and he had kind of frantically and panicked asked them if they were sure it was pauline and you know they were like yes and then he he muttered something that sounded like i'm guilty and then left i'm not really sure what they did about that i don't know if they told people about that i there was no follow-up there's no follow-up about it there's nothing that says like oh we talked to him he just like felt bad for not being protective or like he just thought that girl wasn't her it, there's nothing nothing to recap <laughs> a two-year-old girl goes missing on her family farm a month later a girl who is identified as a Pauline, oh hello, is found 200 miles away. The little girl is recognized as Pauline, but she doesn't recognize them and she has a completely different dialect of French than they have. Only a few weeks later, they found a decomposed body of a little girl without hands, feet, or a head, just a mile away from the farm with the same clothes that Pauline disappeared in folded beside her. Are you gonna come up here? So 
I have a lot of questions about this because I, there's nothing ever said about what happened to the other little girl because it's a, like she, the person who brought her said like, oh, I just found this girl wandering around and she looks like Pauline. I, I have questions. Like, first of all, was that body that was found Pauline's? For sure. Like, do we know for sure? I would say yes. I would venture to guess yes. But where was the body when they were all searching for her? Or when the biker had gone past that spot every single day? And who was the doppelganger child? Like, what happened to her after this whole thing? I have a theory, and this might be my, like, I've been watching too much Shane Dawson conspiracies. I feel like like a poor mother who cannot afford to keep her child, maybe, you know? Um, and so she, she's like, there's this family who has a farm. My kid happens to look like her. This might work out for her and like be really nice for her and it might help the family. So like, you know, kind of things go together. Or a terrible person who's like, there's this orphan. So that I like, or there's a kid that I have that looks like this kid. So I'll just send them there, I guess. That works for me, you know, gets her, gets rid of a child. As sad as it is, there's a lot of cases of people bringing home a child that isn't theirs, thinking it's theirs. There's a lot of things of like people going missing and a child coming back and it's not them, which is so scary. Um, but this wouldn't be the only time and it definitely would not be the only time that it was wrong. It's very understandable okay can you like she's pulling down my shirt okay. it's understandable for parents who lose someone to want to believe that that's their child no matter how many things are going against it even if your gut is like that's not my kid you're gonna want that to be your kid and like there's so much trauma that honestly even if it was for sure your kid there's plenty of cases too of like you just like not even registering it because it, you've just gone through so much oh she's being so cute you're being so cute thank you that's the end of that story um the story of pauline picard thanks for your butt obviously it's unsolved still but i'm happy that they found her they could you know put her to rest in some way and uh hopefully one day we'll know what happened but i kind of doubt it but that's the story, I hope it wasn't too long, and um, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks.